Hi there, my name is Dennis Adams and this is HMS Defence. It's a kit bash that I put together using the hull of the FX HMS Tiger with the um, guns and, and uh, various other fittings from uh, the HMS Belfast. You can see uh, in this uh, photograph I took whilst I was building the model that the, uh, the lighter plastic is the uh, the Belfast, there's pom-poms there, gun directors, masts and so on, and the darker plastic um, represents the uh, the Tiger uh, components which was done uh, from a much older mould, much uh, harder plastic. Anyway that's how she ended up, I was uh, fairly pleased with her, I have uh, uh, was did modelling as a kid and only really just taken it back up again uh, over the last year or so. So I was quite pleased with it. One of the things I did as an experiment was a seascape. I've never done one before, uh, but I was fairly pleased with it. So um, people have said to me, how did you do that? Can you tell us how you achieve that? Uh, any hints and tips? So the purpose of this um, video is just to share with you some of the things that I learned whilst I was doing the seascape, um, things that uh, worked, things that I that didn't work. Um, hopefully by the end of this video um, you'll end up uh, getting inspired to build your own seascapes and you'll probably build them better than I have uh, in my first attempt. Obviously when you're going to do something like a seascape just as we are going to when we're building a model we do the research so you need to do a little bit of research um, about how the sea works and what uh, waves actually look like. One of the places I recommend you have a look at is this great book here by Tristan Gooley talking about how to read water. And one of the things he pointed out uh, is there was some work done by Kelvin, a uh, great scientist uh, from many years ago, and identified the fact that waves coming out from a ship tended to be at about 20 degrees. Um, and before they tended to expire. And uh, you had also these transverse waves as well. Uh, it took a bit of getting my head around that, but uh, a better way to uh, look into that is do have a look at some ordinary photographs of the type of ship that you're trying to build. Here we've got an example of HMS Fiji, and one of the things you'll notice is there's this very strong bow wave here and after the bow wave you always seem to get a trough and then usually a second bow wave uh, second wave comes along here followed by a second trough sometimes there's a third trough here and uh, obviously the far place part of the water behind the stern is always uh, very um, churned up uh, partly by propellers but also partly by the hull going through the water so you begin to get a picture of how um, the waves actually behave. Here's another example of um, a town class cruiser. Um, I'm not sure which one this is, but again you can see here there is this very obvious bow wave. You've got the trough that occurs after that, um, another secondary wave, and so on and so forth. I also had a look at this picture here. This is it's called Cruisers of World War II from Wikipedia. I'm sure that's not a cruiser. That looks like a um, Queen, Queen Elizabeth class battleship to me. But the thing that interested me is the fact that the, uh, the wake comes out from the boat and then tends to follow the line of the boat. Just a couple of boat lengths, less than a couple of boat lengths away. Um, doesn't tend to... Uh, go out very much. There's a few secondary wavelets here. So once you've got some sort of idea of what waves actually look like, you can start putting some design together. Now I used a, a balsa wood base and I planted the um, HMS defense into that before I started building the seascape. And one of the questions people would ask me is, well, why did you use a full hull model? Why didn't you just make it a waterline? Well, a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one is that uh, because of these troughs in the waves, um, I expect that uh, some of the wave height will be above the boot line and some of it will be about below. And very often you get a waterline model is at the boot line. If you're going to use a waterline model with a seascape, you probably need to give it a bit of extra height so that you could uh, put waves going, uh, troughs as well as waves. 
The other reason that I uh, made a full hull model is because um, defense is actually turning to starboard, heading towards the enemy, uh, uh, ensigns flying, and therefore she's likely to heal. And again, with a waterline model, um, you won't get uh, the boat healing uh, unless you do a little bit of work with some sandpaper and uh, do some work on that. So that's why I've used a full hull model. So I sketched out where the model was going to go and then uh, tried to think in my own mind how would I want the waves to be designed. Well, there are two components here. One is I was assuming that the, uh, the basic wind and wave motion was going to be from right to left here. And therefore these green blue lines here show where I would expect to find waves normally if there was no boat in the water. What I then did is try to draw back something between 40 and 20 degree uh, lines to indicate where I would see the primary bow, the secondary bow wave, maybe a tertiary one, and obviously at the back uh, everything would be churned up. So I've built my wave patterns based on the wind and based on the forward movement of the boat. Then I just need the equipment. So how did I build it? Well, good old-fashioned toilet paper, uh, some PVA adhesive um, and uh, some water because uh, we're going to water it down and make it nice and gooey. And having built the uh, basic shape, I've um, laid out toilet paper in the shape of those waves, um, made them into a bit of a rolling motion, and then covered them with uh, other scraps of toilet paper uh, as I've done there, making sure I've got no sharp edges and basically just tapping them down using PVA glue um, which has been watered down, which seeps into the toilet paper and gives you uh, this sort of crinkly effect. And then I covered it with uh, the first layer of gouache of uh, Model Maker's acrylic just to give me a very base colour. One of the things that I uh, discovered uh, in looking, researching this, is that it's very important to have multiple layers of colour. Um, here is a little bit of test fitting that I was doing uh, with Defence. Um, she's coming on quite well, but at the same time I'm doing the, uh, the sailing. You can see here that uh, there's uh, the bow wave is there, the secondary wave is there, there's a tertiary wave there. They were laid down first with the toilet paper allowed to dry a little bit and then additional toilet paper put on the place. So I've got the wave formations that I'm looking for. I've got my base colour, I made sure my base colour is fully covering everything completely and then began to add other colours and here I was beginning to use a mixture of uh, blues and greens um, gradually adding a little bit more dark, a black, bit of white, bit of blue, bit of green, dabbing it into the uh, into the paper, uh, letting it soak in, um, doing it in a fairly random random way. You can see that these have got sort of green spots here still. Uh, these are a bit more blue, these are a bit more gray up here. Um, and so uh, using this combination of colors, what I've um, read about uh, suggests that uh, multiple layers of colors, layer on layer on layer, seems to give the right effect. So once you're happy with that, and you can see here that the bow waves have begun to get a bit prominent here, um, then uh, you can start playing with some white uh, paint. And there's a couple of things that uh, I uh, put together here at this point. First of all, made sure that, that everything around the hull of the ship was going to be white. Um, I'll explain why in a little while. Made sure that I've got this white around the hull and then just dragged a dry paintbrush um, from bow to stern and skimming over the wave tops as I did uh, to give me that broken wave effects. The, the white, don't forget, is where waves are reaching a particular height and either because of the friction of gravity they've reached a height and they can't go any further, they collapse down on themselves or um, as a ship goes through them, there's the friction of the ship's hull. So those are the two things that I'm looking to achieve. So we're beginning to come together. I think it's beginning to look okay. Um, so I'm getting quite pleased with the way the, um, the seascape was looking. I actually found I was using a lot more white than I had expected, and the whole thing was lightening up a lot more than I had expected. 
Uh, but there's a couple of other tricks that I needed to put in place. If you have a look at this particular uh, picture, um, this happens to be the General Belgrano taken from Wikipedia. What you'll notice is that generally speaking, there is a line of disturbed water pretty much along the whole length of the hull. Um, it's sort of hidden down here. It's gone below the boot camp, about uh, below the boot line there. But most of the time you can see it's the full length of the hull. And I needed to make sure that that was the case. So what I did down along here, um, a couple of gaps here, is I put down some tissue, some um, cotton. So just ordinary cotton pulled across, uh, glued together with PVA glue and put in place along here to give this wispy effect. And you can particularly see it uh, along the bow there, this wispy effect. Uh, and that is basically just pieces of cotton to give that effect. And that was really the final step that gave me um, that uh, uh, very thin line of uh, disturbed water along the length of the boat. So how did, how did it go? I was fairly pleased about it. Um, there's a few things that I would done. I would certainly do differently. One of the things that I would certainly do differently is look at the angle of those waves. I think they're probably nearer 40 degrees than 20 degrees. So I would probably make them a bit more realistic by putting them further back rather than at that uh, sharp angle. Uh, the other thing I would probably do if I were doing this again is I would probably finish it off with some gloss varnish. Um, and the other thing I'd recommend is um, dab a bit of gloss varnish along the hull of the boat. Where the hull is uh, hitting the water, where it's getting splash ups from the water, um, you're going to get a glossy effect. So uh, put the gloss varnish across there as well. Uh, it just gives a, a bit more of a watery effect. OK, so I hope you found that useful. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Do put any comments that you want to in the comments section and uh, let me know how you get on and uh, share your ideas as well. Thanks a lot.